Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show. I'm your host, Cédric Lundven, and today I'm with Frank Monet, and we talk about Spring Boot. From Datastax, this is the Distributed Data Show. Okay, Frank, so could you remind us what is Spring Boot and how it is handy for developer? Sure, so Spring Boot is a uh, framework built upon the Spring framework itself that allows you to generate essentially a starter application from just a simple website. Uh, it's, a, it's a RESTful endpoint that you can hit. They've got a nice skin on it. Uh, but it generates everything that you need to get an executable jar up and running that brings all the dependencies with you into that jar. Yes, yeah, so no more application server, right? No more building out the stub, using Maven to generate it. Yeah, so, and then no more deploying to WebInf and making it all work. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's, it's a nice, nice structure. Yes, it's great. So what did you came into Spring Boot at the first place? So I was fortunate enough to be at the, uh, the Spring One conference when they announced it. Um, and I had a, a, a sort of personal relationship with Rob Lynch, who's the Spring Security uh, lead. Yeah. And he tweeted out on, on Twitter, he put a little bit of groovy code. There was a fully functioning web service in oh, a tweet. So, that. and this is back when tweets were 140 characters. Uh, so he put the entire functioning web service in there. And that was kind of how they were announcing it to the world. Uh, and I was like, wow. Like having worked with Spring for so long at that point and realizing that they did all of that in 140 characters was just absolutely amazing. Um, so then throughout that conference, I actually got to play with the framework and actually built a full application in minutes. And it was actually an application that did something. And I was, in all honesty, I was hooked day one. I, I saw the power of that going forward. And so what contributes again to the interest in the framework now? So I, I really think a lot of it is the same things that attracted me in the first place. So developer efficiency is still number one. Being able to take an application from nothing to being live in production in minutes instead of hours is huge. And then when you look at the way that we write applications today, you know, lots of iterations, spinning features really quickly, especially in the cloud space, it it really adds that value proposition of what Spring Boot brings to the table uh, because I can spin up many microservices in the same time. It used to take me to write one big monolithic application, if not faster, because I'm not dealing with a lot of that stuff. Um, and, and I kind of alluded with the cloud part, but I think that that is really continues to be a driving force behind Spring Boot is the fact that they're all in on cloud. Uh, they, they understand that the market is cloud. Uh, and, you know, the caveat there is that you can run cloud applications in the enterprise. So they haven't alienated their core enterprise customers by doing this. They've just shifted the paradigm a little bit. You know, now we can run in containers and we can do a whole bunch of other stuff, but we're still using the same paradigm. We're still abstracting from EJBs. We're still, EJBs is not the right term. Yeah. They're still abstracting from J2E or Jakarta, um, but they're, they're really pulling the best parts into this little component that you can just drop out there and run. So I think that that is what continues to drive it. And I think that that's what continues to make me interested in what they're doing is because of that efficiency that they've gained. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. But is there any limitation about it? I heard sometimes. You so, yeah, you know, and it's a great point because for those that, that have followed me or know, I'm really big on understanding how tools work. And, and with Spring, and especially with Spring Boot, there's like this magic hand wavy that goes on. And if you're not a developer that has dug into the framework, you don't understand that there's a lot going on there. It's just, oh, it works, it's great. Everything wires up and all your dependencies are there. And oh yeah, it just works, we can just deploy. And I think that, that actually is a big downside of the framework because they've, they've made it so easy to use that developers quit understanding how the tool itself works. and and by not understanding how it works, you can kind of paint yourself into some corners, so to speak, uh, that, that don't necessarily yield good development practices. So I think it's really, really important. And, and I, I've spent a lot of my career, especially on the education side of my career, trying to help developers understand the tools, whether it was Hibernate or, or any of the tools that you look at out there. Spring is definitely one that I'm all in on, that it's really important to understand how the framework works, how the the dependencies are, are mixed and matched and how they actually operate 
to make your code do what it does. Uh, so, so to me, that's a huge negative that, that is really not the framework's fault. It's not the no. writer's fault. They've done such a good job that they've actually, I think, hurt the developer community just a little bit because they're doing their job so well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a double-edged sword. But I think as a developer, especially as you mature in your career, understanding the frameworks, understanding the tools you're using becomes that much more important. Yeah, Spring first and then Spring Boot. Even Spring at some oh, injection yeah. mechanism, you have to know what to do. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's, again, once you understand how Spring works, then Spring Boot is natural. Yes, it is. You know, so, and it translates to the database world as well, right? With what we work with is it's, you know, once you understand how data works, the tooling that goes with it, then you can mix and match what's the best tool for my job. And I think that that's really, really a powerful proposition. And, and Spring helps with that. But you got to understand what's going on if you really want to use it to its full capacity. Yeah, I'm thinking, does Spring Boot has become too big? In the first place, it was holding in a tweet. But now it's like huge with hundreds of megabytes of uh, uh, code just to run a simple application. Yeah, and, and you know, I think... As Java guys, right? Java developers, that's always been a problem with Java. Yeah. Everybody's always said that they're big. And, and it's a fair argument. I mean, when you look at the size of a Spring Boot artifact, just disk space, yeah. it's big. It's big yeah. But then if you start looking at the runtime size and what that does in a container environment where you're deploying these apps, you still need a lot of RAM to run these things. And I think that that's a danger. And... and I honestly, from, from the people I know that work on the Spring Framework, they know it. Oh, okay. And, and, and I think that they acknowledge it. And, and uh, you know, JDK 11 has brought some help to what they've yeah. done. It's much faster now. Yeah. But, but I, think, I think that they'll, in my opinion, every time I've seen what they've done, they've solved the problem. They've got to know that this memory thing is going to become an issue because in the cloud world, we're paying as developments, as shops, we're paying for the RAM, we're yeah. paying for the compute, sure. and it's not a sustainable model for what they're trying to solve because ultimately they'll shift everything back to these monolithic applications that we deploy once, and that didn't work when we did distributed, you know, distributed computing. So it's it's a value, but there's always, as with everything, right? There's no silver bullet with what yeah. we're doing. There's no one technology that's perfect, and I think that that does open up the door for other languages, other technologies. Um, and quite frankly, I think as a developer, much like we were talking about with understanding your tooling, I think you have to pick the language and, and the tooling that's right for the job. And Spring Boot isn't right for every single job that you need to do, but there's a lot of things it does. And I think that that is where we can see maturity of development as well, is picking the right tool. You know, if Python's good enough for what you need to do, maybe you do Python or maybe you do Go. Yeah. But I'm still... We never, say, yeah, we never see it enough, the right tool for the right, right use case. Absolutely. Absolutely. But hey, we're kind of in the same boat. Yes, we I'm are. still a Java guy at my heart. So I, I, yeah. love, I love Spring. I love Java. But I'm open to other things. I'm open to learning. And that's, I mean, learning is, you, yeah. you can't take that away. Okay. So Frank, thank you to have been with us today. Uh, we will see each other next time in Accelerate, late yes. May. If you want to be at Accelerate, go to academy.datastack.com and register. And until then, see you next time.